So welcome back. And before we're going to move on, first of all, I want to credit the proprietor of this image here that I was using. It was definitely my bad for not doing so. It's the flow cytometry core facility. Very interesting stuff. You got good, uh, good research, uh, flow cytometry relevant information, if so you seek. I am going to supply you with the basics, uh, basically all that you need to know for your biophysics course. I'm not going to cover anything else, uh, basically because you may be overwhelmed with material for other subjects or for the rest of the course. So if you want more information, this is where you can, uh, you can go. And uh, let's consider what we have left to, to uh, talk about. We're going to talk about cell sorting. And you need to know this. You need to know it's called gating. Uh, this is also a fluorescence activated uh, cell sorting. Uh, this is one of the acronyms. I don't believe you need to know this. You have got to know uh, gating and understand that it's basically sorting. And we're going to talk, I'm going to mention uh, an application. I already mentioned what we can use it for, but I'm going to give you an application in case you need to give an example on an exam. And also I'm going to make a point to discuss a little bit of the data acquisition. Uh, hopefully I'm going to have time for that as well. So let's get started with cell sorting. Um, really what, what, I, what I already mentioned before is I can get information about the content of the cell, content of the cell from the 90 degree, from the 90 degree uh, light scattering, I can get information about the content, content. So you can imagine that at, let's just say this is the nozzle, this is the nozzle. Let's just say that I have uh, some cells going through it. And let's just say that the sorting via optic system is done here. This is the laser. And now I have the detectors here and here and uh, 90 degree and forward angle light scattering. You know, I'm just going fast through this because it was in the previous video. And uh, believe it or not, by the time this cell gets to this position, I know everything I need to know. It is that quick. It is that quick. And, and as you can imagine, the optics or the, or the light affiliated part of this whole uh, instrumentation is in fact working much faster than the flow rate or the volumetric flow rate of, uh, of this device. And really now I'm going to touch about the electronics behind it, which is the last portion. We mentioned the hydrodynamic, the optics, and now the electronic portion. Electronic. The electronics. So really, what are we doing here? At this point, I know everything I need to know about the cell. Let's just say, does it have a target molecule in it? Let's just say this cell, this cell got here, and it has a target molecule in it. And if I only, had I only had a way to make it, to make it collect at this point, and get the, all, all the other ones that, that don't have it maybe collect at this point. This would be magnificent. And actually, we can do that. We can do that with sorting. And now the idea with gating is this, it's just the necessary conditions, the necessary conditions to cause this guy to be sorted here. We're going to talk about the mechanism in a second. So you can, you can imagine that I use the fluorescent information that I got from the 90 degree activated or the 90 degree uh, sorted light or dispersed light or really uh, to get information about the content of this molecule. Now I know it has this given molecule. Perfect. And my gating, my gating threshold, threshold is going to be having this. And if it passes, if it passes, it's going to be sorted to vial A. And if it doesn't, it's going to be sorted to vial B. This is B and this is A. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we need, we need to separate this cell from the nozzle. And really, I'm not going to get into the, the very specifics, but the basics is that we can get this nozzle. First of all, let's just assume this nozzle ends here. There's the opening here, opening, which means I'm going to have just a laminar flow of fluid down. But I don't want to have laminar flow. I want these guys to separate, to separate individually, because if I can take this guy and put it over here. But if there's a fluid, containing a bunch of cells in it, a bunch of cells in it, I can't really separate them. So I need, a, I need to separate them to drops. And I'm just going to use another type of blue color here because everything is blue. I need to separate them into drops. And each individual drop is going to have one cell in it. And it is very possible, although it sounds, uh, it sounds quite, uh, quite insurmountable, but it's not that difficult. How do we use that? We use some sort of... Uh, a piezoelectric or rather an inverse piezoelectric effect 
to vibrate this nozzle here. And again, inverse piezo, inverse inverse piezoelectric, if you don't remember, is taking current and making a vibration. Taking a current and it's going to give me a vibration. And really, when I vibrate this little thing, it's going to cause the stream, the stream of cells to be, to be broken down into individual drops. Very good, very good. So the next step really, and, 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 it, and you can imagine that if I had a way to take this specific drop and put it over here, then I would be okay then I would be great because I can actually sort these guys out. And it just so happens that there's an electronic portion that is, let's say, it's connected here. There's some sort of computer here. Computer, the computer gets data from these guys. Computer gets data from these guys. And based on the data that it got from the fluorescence, it's still, it's still called fluorescence activated cell sorting. So it got information from here. And it already know that the cell that got to this position needs to be sorted to vial A. So you can imagine that maybe if I in, in, can introduce this guy with some sort of, let's just say I can introduce him with some sort of current or a pulse or some sort of electric charge. Maybe, maybe I can charge it positive. Then you can imagine that maybe at this point I can have a plate that is charged negative. This plate is going to be charged negative and this plate is going to be charged positive. Now let's consider what happened from the very beginning. From the very beginning. I had cells coming through here. Cells are coming through here, and they're being examined at this point. Very good. And now I'm getting information about their content, and uh, the gating threshold is for having this specific molecule. So now the information is coming to the computer, which realizes by the time this cell gets here that it has this given molecule. It passes the gating threshold, or it, it has the condition that I need. So it's going to induce it with a positive charge, and this positive charge is going to come down. It's going to, to vibrate off the end of the nozzle into a drop. And this drop is going to be positively charged. And we know that this, this positive charge is going to attract this negatively charged plate that I have. So you can imagine that this drop is just going to be attracted here and is going to be sorted here. And this is really how we sort or how we use fluorescence activated cell sorting. We induce them with a charge, and then we have different plates in, uh, that charge differently. Maybe you have one for neutral cells, and maybe another gating mechanism is having maybe this molecule here. And if this guy has it, maybe uh, I want to sort it over here. Maybe I just want to sort it over here. So I'm going to induce it with a negative charge. It's going to be negatively charged, and it's going to be attracted to the positive plate. It's going to be collected here. Let's just take a look at what it may look like. Very good. And this is brought to us by this, by this website here. It's not really a website that pertains to, uh, to flow cytometry, but it's, it's got this nice image. So really we have a way, we see, this, is, this is where the optics, this is where the optics are attaining the information. It goes to the computer and the computer can actually induce a current via an electrical wire, can induce a current, and it can either induce a positive charge or a negative charge, and accordingly they will be attracted to the, to the respective plates that, are, that have a specific charge, and maybe neutral ones are going to just be sorted this way. Just concluding it, uh, gating or cell sorting or fluorescence activated cell sorting is using information I got from the 90 degree light scattering about the content of the cell, uh, wondering if I have specific, uh, specific molecules maybe in them, specific target or tar molecules of interest, and at that point, if I do, and by the way, having this molecule uh, of interest is the gating uh, state or the, uh, you can say, the gating threshold. And if it has that, we can vibrate the nozzle, make drops of them, and these drops are just going to attract to the plate that has the opposite charge that I induced to them according to this mechanism. Obviously, I may have, I may have just... Uh, uh, explain it in a more complicated way, but as long as you have the key phrases of saying, I use the uh, 90 degree light scattering to attain information about the content of the cell. Accordingly, uh, an, electrical, an, electrical, an electrical charge was induced, and there was some sort of sorting. Uh, sor sorting, I would also throw in the word gating in here, and uh, maybe the uh, the vibration of the nozzle to create drops, vibration, vibration of nozzle, nozzle to create 
create drops. These drops contain individual cells. So individual, individual cells, which means one cell for each drop. And this was actually uh, present in, th this is an essay question. This is not a true or false. This is obviously an essay question, and it has come up in an exam. Very good. So now I'm going to talk about applications. And before I do applications, before I do, what's important to me, uh, just to mention real quickly about the data acquisition, the data acquisition data, is that we can get a lot of, uh, a lot of information, namely parameters, and each parameter can be, uh, let's say parameter A, parameter, parameter A is having a uh, presence, presence of molecule, molecule XYZ. And if it's there, then I can have, uh, I can have specific data collections and I can create a lot of information and I can plot it against histograms and graphs and uh, two-dimensional, three-dimensional graphs. And you can look at these in the lecture slides. I don't find it super important. What I do find important is that the data or the statistical implication follows a Poisson distribution. And the Poisson distribution is a reminder, if you've, if you've forgotten, is, uh, is, is in statistics, it's basically a discrete random variable distribution. And as you can imagine, I'm not going to go through the essentials, but you can't have 1.5 cells or 2.3 cells. Uh, you, this, this value cannot take the number of cells cannot take any value between 1 and 2 integral. You can't really take 1.55 or whatever. So this is, this is, as far as we mean, a discrete random variable. These parameters are going to be discrete random variables. And that's why the Poisson distribution is a good representative of the, of the statistical model it follows, in case you are asked. So application, I'm just going to give you one that you may remember. It's called immuno, immuno, phenotyping. You know, typing. It may, it may sound very complicated. In essence, it really is not. And I somehow got the impression that this is Professor Matush's uh, personal favorite. So I'm going to mention and discuss this. Let's just say I have uh, a white blood cell. I have a white blood cell, and it's a leukemic white blood cell. And, I, I, and I'm not sure if this person has leukemia or not, but I've taken a sample, and I have a bunch of cells. I have a, blood, a bunch of white blood cells, and I want to know, I want to diagnose, does this guy have leukemia? And it just so happens that leukemic, uh, leukemic cells, uh, they express a certain protein on their, on their membrane, you can say. And in that sense, and in that sense, let's just put it in red here. And in that sense, they stand out. They stand out. Very good. I'm not going to touch about the, uh, the whole process of protein expression uh, and all the, this information really is not that relevant for this, for our purposes here. But really, if I could somehow uh, find out if these guys are present in my blood cell, in my, in my bloodstream, sorry. So I've taken a sample, and uh, I know that there's uh, white blood cells and red blood cells, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to know if these, if these uh, white blood cells are leukemic. If these blood cells are leukemic, they're going to express this protein. So what I can do is I can introduce, uh, introduce the sample with antibodies, with certain antibodies, uh, let's say the Y-shaped molecules that we discussed a few times in the course. And these molecules are going to, these Y-shaped molecules are going to bind to these specific uh, proteins that were expressed by these cells. And these Y-shaped y -shaped molecules are going to be stained with a uh, fluorescent dye of some sort. So you can imagine that I can get information whether or not I have, I have these in the bloodstream based on whether or not I'm getting this specific fluorescent response. So let's just imagine that I'm introducing these guys into this sample and they're going to stick here. They're going to stick here. Very good. I have these Y-shaped antibody molecules and they're sticking here and they have fluorescent dye that's, that's attached to them or a fluorescent molecule or whatever, fluorescent staining that's attached here. And I can imagine that as they're flowing through my float cytometer and they're illuminated via, via laser, they can actually fluoresce at a specific, uh, a specific wavelength that would, that would show me that these cells are in fact leukemic because they're expressing, they're expressing this specific protein that was detected by this specific fluorescent uh, labeled um, Y-shaped antibody. So this is immunophenotyping, and this could be actually used 
to diagnose leukemia, presence of leukemic white blood cells. Hopefully you found this helpful. I'll see you in the Q&A session.